Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Zaretsky, and I specialize in maternal fetal medicine and fetal intervention at the Colorado Fetal Care Center. I'm delighted to have you join me today as we embark on a journey into the captivating realm of maternal fetal medicine and fetal intervention. Our focus today is on a common challenge in the world of twin pregnancies. So sit back, relax, and let's navigate the intricacies of selective fetal growth restriction. In this episode, we're shining a light on identical twins where a delicate issue surfaces, selective fetal growth restriction. This is a scenario where one twin thrives while the other faces challenges in growth. Let's dive into the science and strategies behind managing this complex situation for the best possible outcomes. Imagine a scenario where within the shared environment of the placenta, one twin receives more nourishment than the other. This leads to an interesting discrepancy. While one twin grows at a healthy rate, the other lags behind. In medical terms, we're talking about one twin measuring below the 10th percentile for growth with a considerable weight difference exceeding 25% compared to the other twin. Now let's delve into the mechanics of blood flow. Doppler helps us tell the story of each twin's well-being. Envision this as an interplay of circulation. There's forward flow during the heart's resting phase, and then there's the scenario where blood flow either pauses or reverses signaling potential challenges. This can reveal crucial insights into the health of each twin, and specifically the smaller twin. Selective fetal growth restriction is further broken down by the type of Doppler or blood flow pattern seen in the smaller twin's umbilical arteries. This tells us how much resistance there is to blood flow through the placenta. In the first type of selective fetal growth restriction, there is continued forward flow during heart's resting phase. In the second type, there is either absent or reversal flow, meaning there is really high resistance of blood flow, where flow actually pauses or moves backwards during heart relaxation. In the third category, there is alternating forward, absent, and reverse flow, which is caused by blood moving in both directions through a shared artery-to-artery -artery connection between the baby's umbilical cords. We further assess how the small twin is doing through another crucial blood vessel called the ductus venosus. This provides us with guidance on when and how to intervene. It's a delicate balance aiming to seize the right moment for the best possible outcomes by utilizing either delivery of the twins or fetal intervention. With the first type of selective fetal growth restriction, the twins do very well and usually deliver at an optimal time in pregnancy but they still require at least weekly ultrasounds to monitor how they are doing. The second type is more severe, and blood flow can worsen significantly during pregnancy, putting the smaller twin at risk of stillbirth. If one twin dies in this situation, they can result in the loss of the other twin or cause neurological injury in the surviving co-twin. We go to great lengths to prevent this from happening. The third type has a fairly constant blood flow pattern, but is historically associated with a very high 15% risk of unexpected stillbirth with the same potential complications as I just discussed a second ago. Now let's deep dive into our strategy. The primary goal is to achieve the highest double twin survival rate, and in the unfortunate cases where one twin will ultimately be lost, the goal is to preserve the health of the normally grown fetus. Therapy includes close ultrasound monitoring before viability with either weekly or twice a week blood flow measurements. In our center, we then admit patients to the hospital after fetal viability, which is traditionally beyond 24 weeks. The pregnancies are monitored three times a day, and Dopplers are measured twice a week while in the hospital. Our goal is to safely reach a gestational age, where at the time of delivery, both babies have the best chance for a healthy outcome. When this cannot be done, fetal intervention, including radiofrequency ablation or laser therapy, is utilized with the hope of at least preserving the health of the normally grown fetus. We've meticulously examined 158 twin pairs grappling with selective fetal growth restriction over the course of five years at the Colorado Fetal Care Center with a special focus on the most severe cases of selective fetal growth restriction, employing our rigorous and frequent monitoring. It's all about preserving the health and well-being of both twins. Our efforts have yielded promising results. In cases of severe selective fetal growth restriction, where the odds might appear against us, we've achieved remarkable success. 
Previously reported loss rates of 15% have been significantly reduced to just 5% for the third type of selective fetal growth restriction and 7% for the second type. A vast majority of our cases have resulted in the ultimate success we tirelessly strive for, the survival of both twins. For those navigating this complex complication of selective fetal growth restriction, I urge you to consider a comprehensive evaluation, intensive and regular monitoring of Doppler, and admission for intensive hospital care as part of your journey. This is a strategy founded on experience, expertise, and hope stemming from our dedicated work at the Colorado Fetal Care Center. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Michael Zaretsky from the Colorado Fetal Care Center, and I encourage you to take away the message that even in the face of formidable challenges, we can achieve overwhelming success. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at the Colorado Fetal Care Center.